Milton Freeman went to China on a tour. The Chinese delegation there showed him a new canal building project that they were working on. Freeman asked the delegation, uh, can I ask you why do you have men digging this canal using shovels? How come you're not using earth movers or bulldozers? And a member of the Chinese delegation responded, oh, well, if we were to use the big machines, we wouldn't be able to create as many jobs. And Friedman said, oh, it's a jobs creation program. I thought you wanted to build the canal. If it's jobs you want, take away their shovels and give them spoons. Job creation is on lots of people's lips, especially politicians. I would argue that creating jobs is easy. It's the creation of wealth that's hard. For example, we could destroy all farm machinery. Through that, we'd create millions of new farm jobs overnight. But I don't think anyone thinks that's the real solution to our problem. The point being that economic progress comes not so much when we create jobs, that's easy, but when we destroy jobs that we no longer need. A hundred years ago, over 40% of the population was involved in agricultural jobs of one sort or another. Today, that's under 2%, yet agricultural output has boomed thanks to mechanization and the invention of all kinds of farm machinery. What happened to those old agricultural jobs? As mechanization has made farm products cheaper, people have had to spend less of their money on food and are able to spend their money on other kinds of things. The story of human progress has been our ability to eliminate jobs by economizing on the scarcest resource of all, human labor, in order to make the things that we want. Of course, new innovations don't happen all at once. They happen gradually over time. And all technological innovation means that workers have to learn new skills and some are likely to be unemployed for some period of time. And while that unemployment is bad, the alternatives are worse. These labor transitions are the price we pay for economic progress. To prevent them would be to halt growth, innovation, and the reduction of poverty. Job destruction also signals young people about where the new jobs for the future will be. New jobs have come up that have replaced the old jobs that were once in agriculture. Over the course of the 20th century, we've gone from a nation of farm jobs, to industrial jobs, to service jobs, to knowledge jobs and market signals can indicate to people what sorts of skills they should be investing in and where the new jobs of the future will be. Governments do not have these signals. In fact, many government jobs programs are really about meeting the needs of politicians, not the needs of consumers in the marketplace. Governments are good at creating work, but they're not good at creating value-generating jobs. If it's valuable jobs you want, you need people like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs who know how to create value and generate meaningful jobs. The best job creation program in human history is the free market and the entrepreneurship it generates.